Welcome to Talk Me Healthy. Each show we invite a guest to explore a topic related to healthy living. They share their expertise, personal stories, and we learn from them how they turn their passion and knowledge into practical tips that you can use now to improve your health. I'm your host, Sherry Keating, founder of Diabetes Care Consulting. My goal is that you will hear something each show that will motivate you to make a small but significant change towards living a healthier and happier life. Hello and welcome to Talk Me Healthy. My name is Sherry Keating and I'm your host. On today's show, my guest is Adam Costello. He is from Easter Seals, Massachusetts, from the Veterans Outreach Program. Mm -hmm. And Adam is returning. We actually did an on-location shoot at Easter Seals in September. And we got a little taste of what you're doing, but I wanted to hear more, so I invited you back and I appreciate you coming. I absolutely love, love being here. So thank you for coming back. So um, now we have more time to really get into this program because it's an exciting new program for Easter Seals and for you. And so I want to hear everything about it. All right. Well. So tell me, what is the program? First of all, how did you get involved working for Easter Seals and in this veterans program? Well, yeah, so, yeah, we can start back at the beginning. And so I've been out of the Army for, for seven years. And... Um, in the army, I had I had two jobs. One was as a, uh, a tank crew member, right? So I get to go on the tanks and, and drive ah. them and shoot them. That was so much fun. But that was only in training. I didn't do that actually uh, deployed. Um, I was also a medic, right? So ah. as a medic, I was attached to um, an infantry uh, battalion. I did a couple of deployments over in Iraq with them. Oh and well, so, thank you for serving. Oh no, thank thank you. No, I um I enjoyed my service. I really did. Even the time overseas, uh, we had our good days and bad days. Mm. But um, I'm glad I did it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really feel better for doing it. Um, uh, and then uh, you know, seven years later, I, I promised my wife I would go for for one deployment. I said I was just going to do my part, and I'd be gone for three mm -hmm. years. And then um, uh, as I was about to get out. I saw the new folks coming in and how unprepared they were for the reality of what they would see overseas. Mm. Um, so I called my wife and I said, "Hey, can I go back again? You know, just just one more time." And she said, uh, "She said, well, do what you're gonna do, right?" So I mm -hmm. went back and I ended up I ended up being in for for seven years. And then um, after that, I lost the hearing over on the side. And uh, uh, they said, "Well, you can't deploy anymore." And I said, "Well, if I can't deploy anymore." Why would I want to wake up at four thirty in the morning? He, you know, and so, right. and so that was it. That was the end of my my army time. Okay. Um, so when I came home, uh, I was excited because there were so many veterans organizations that were out there, uh, and everything looked like it was going great. They had great reputations. Um, but then when I went uh, to get services, there just seemed to be a lot of misinformation um, that was flowing around. Uh, the services weren't very accessible and that's partly because um maybe the services themselves or just my knowledge or my awareness of how to get through those you know and so as time went on i learned uh much more about those programs but it was too late i was already home now at this point and all of the mistakes that i could have avoided I were already made right? so when you say you were already home, so it was too late. What do you mean? Isn't aren't the services for when people come home? Well, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's a very confusing. It's a very confusing environment, right? So, um, let's say any veterans program out there, uh, most of them have the the taglines. I guess you could say, "We help veterans." Right? Mm -hmm. We help veterans. Mm -hmm. We do these things. So. Mm -hmm. You're not really sure exactly what they do. So I went to the places that everybody knew about. And I won't I won't mention them by name, but I know that I went to the places that everybody knew about that would offer some sort of assistance and I didn't qualify for anything. And I was just really looking for some advice. How do I get started? Where do I go? What what are all these benefits I hear about and how do they actually work? You know, so you were looking for the VA batch uh, benefits any veteran can get, not necessarily coming home with PTSD or 
hearing issues. Right. I, you I are wanna... just in general looking for uh, services for veterans. Yeah. After and after benefits. being gone for so long, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you get ingrained in that military culture. Yeah. And when you come home, you need to start fresh. Okay. Right? So you're you're mm-hmm. you're starting your life again. And what I really wanted was somebody to say, "Hey, this is a good place to start." Okay. You know, this is yeah. a good place to start, and this is where you should reach out mm-hmm. to. This is this is kind mm-hmm. of a roadmap or a guideline to follow, and I couldn't find that anywhere. Okay, right? and that was that was surprising to me. So I did, uh, I stumbled through on my own for for a bit, and uh, I did what I knew to do. So I went to the organizations that I've heard of, and uh, there wasn't anything there for me, right? oh. and, and which was surprising. You know, it was surprising to that me. That is surprising. <laughs> And then I went to uh, uh, various places, and I just tried to figure out what to do. I went to a career fair, very well-known, very big career fair. Um, and I walked out of there with uh, a potential offer for one job out of, like, 350 employers, a potential offer for one job. And it was working part-time as somebody who would fold the clothes, right? So the way it was wow. explained to me is saying, hey, you know, when you go, when, when our shoppers come in, uh, we'll help. Uh, oh, they'll they'll pick up a shirt to see what the picture is maybe on it or see the design. If they don't like it, they'll put it back. So your job would be to run up to that, fold it right, fold it correctly, and put it back. And so you would do that half the day. And I thought, my goodness. Wow. You know, I just spent seven years in the military. I was right. leading soldiers. I've been uh, over You were a medic, you said. I was a medic, right? right. And went through a lot of training, very expensive training. So I had the leadership qualities. Um uh, management qualities, uh, a lot of finance, and even in my civilian time before the ma- uh, military, a lot of management, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I was said, well, you know, I think this is the last thing I'm going to actually look at. I'm just going to do it all myself, mm-hmm. right? And so... Why do you think that is? Why do you think that that was the only job that was offered out of 300 jobs? Well, I don't know. You, you know, that's a, that's a good question, right? So if you have 300, uh, 300 employers there, maybe I didn't have the skills they were looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe um, they didn't have the openings at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard to say. It's right. hard to say. So Very discouraging. It was. It was. It mm-hmm. was to me. And I think, I believe that those have improved quite a bit since. But that was my experience and that was seven okay. years ago, right? So um, when we talk about these programs, I can only explain my experience. Right, through exactly. Them, you know, at, at this point, right? Yeah. So. Uh, so I left there, and then I just did it on my own. I went and uh, I found my own job, and that was really easy to do uh, by myself, you know, mm-hmm. versus uh, through an organization. Uh, so that was a little disheartening uh, at that time. And then the misinformation that I got through some of the uh, uh, organizations that um, I went to, you know, uh, uh, really steered me in the wrong direction. Right. So once I started doing everything myself, uh, things started falling back in, back in line. But what happened was I put too much reliance on these organizations out there to, to kind of give me a hand. Right? Okay. And so um, within two months, I realized that, uh, at least in my situation, that was, a, that was a mistake. And I went and I did it myself. But that always stuck with me as, wow, uh, that's a shame that it has to be like this. Right. And so uh, a couple of years go by. Um, Everything's going well. So in the in the first couple of years, my members of my platoon, members of my unit, started committing suicide here and there. Right, so they they started dropping. So mm. right now, uh, last report I read was was you know just a couple of months ago, and the suicide rate is twenty point six per day. Right, um, and that's a real that number. So yeah, and it's and it's a real number, and the, there's there's no making that up. Right, so. Um, I've seen that, and I've seen that with the people that I've known. And these were great, great guys, you know, and they're very solid uh, soldiers, very solid in the military. And then they came home, and it just didn't didn't click mm-hmm. anymore, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so when I started seeing that, I said, well, you know, looking at my transition home, and and how lost I was, maybe I want to look at that a little bit more. So. Um, I started learning more about veterans benefits, uh, uh, a director position for a uh, veteran service officer came open uh, in the town that I live in and the surrounding towns, um, so I was fortunate enough to get that. And that kind of put me into the inner workings of, one, the local government programs, and then I started getting more involved with the nonprofit programs. 
But the most important part was I got to sit down with thousands of veterans and have one-on-one -on -one conversations mm -hmm. and say, what happened from wherever you were to right now, and why do you think you're here? Right, and so that was a, that was an important question, mm -hmm. and from that, a lot of common areas started to just show themselves. Things that I thought I, I, I just did because I made mistakes, were the same mistakes that everybody else was making. Mm -hmm. And from there, I said, okay, now we have something to build on. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I worked for the for the town for a bit. Um, you know, that was for a couple of years, and I took a break. I went to a computer company, did some stuff over there. That was fun. And then, um, <laughs> and then Easter Sales said that they wanted to start a program in Massachusetts. And learning what I had learned in the past uh, and those experiences I've had, I uh, said, wow, I think I can bring a lot to this to this organization. Right. So uh, uh, went down to Easter Sales. We talked, and it was a pretty long conversation, maybe, maybe a, a couple of hours, we could define a couple of things and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of see exactly how not to make it another organization that just says we help veterans, but to have some real uh, outcomes. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, if I had to look at something that most organizations are doing wrong today is measuring success by output. You know, so if I say, uh, I spent $15 million on preventing homelessness this year. And then you look at the rates of homelessness in Massachusetts, the rates of homelessness uh, among veterans have grown more than any other state mm -hmm. um, over the past year, right? So say I put $15 million into this, um, and that would be successful the way it's measured, uh, the way most Monetary. measures work today, right? Because, wow, you gave $15 million, but what was the end result? Right. A uh, net increase in homelessness. That's... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so now we get to concentrate on outcomes, not outputs. To so see. that's what you're doing differently than what other organizations that offer veterans benefits. That's one of the things. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things. So another one is that uh, our pro we try to test everything, right? And so this might be me, or this might be a member of one of our peer groups that that go out and have direct experiences with these programs. So when you go there, you know what to expect. and We, we know what their capabilities are. And they might not even know that we're, we're there participating. But we're veterans, we're qualified to mm -hmm. participate in a lot of these programs, right? So um, if you look at our peer groups, we have uh, everything from uh, entrepreneurs to uh, homeless to people just coming out of homelessness, uh, getting back into the workforce, uh, high level high level employees so there's a there's a great mix and we can mix into all these programs that are out there and really get a good idea of how they work and what they do and it's not to copy them it's not that's not what we what we do it's to know is this a good program to refer people over to um, if they have the specific need mm -hmm. right so uh, so you utilize other resources out there to refer if you can't give the veteran what they need Absolutely. for your program. So you want to make sure that you're referring them to a program that's actually going to meet their needs. Absolutely. Okay. Right. So we have no desire to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Uh, and if a program out there is well-defined and we know what they offer and, and how they offer it and it's working, then, yeah, we want people to utilize that mm -hmm. program. Right. So, uh, so what does your program offer? What exactly... Is your program a referral source? So that's that's the primary. So that's the foundation. And, oh. and why that's important, right? So information referral is, if you're getting out of the military, we're a great first stop, right? Okay. So we're, we're a great first stop. So what you didn't have, you've now created. That's right. That's oh. right. So, okay. So I'm always saying, I'm the person I wish was there when right. I get out of exactly. the service. Exactly. Right. So uh, we go into pretty pretty deep detail about a lot of these programs that are out there. Um, so is so it like a step-by-step -step guide? So you start here, and then do you do like a one-on-one -on -one, um, sit-down with, so I'm just out of the military, mm -hmm. and I don't know where to go, but I hear about this great program that you offer. So I call you up, and I say, hey, this is my situation. What do you do from there? Do you meet with me? Yeah. One-on-one? Yeah, -on -one? So, so we do a one-on-one, -on -one or sometimes um, people bring their dad or their mom with them. Right? And so, you know, so we're talking... Uh, if, family, you, if you do, yeah, if you do, a, if you do a one-time enlistment, um, 
you know, you'll be 22 years old or so mm -hmm. when, when you get out, if you went in right after high school. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will be like, Dad, will you come with me right. to, okay. to listen to what this guy has to say? Mm -hmm. right. So, um, yeah, so we have families in there quite a bit. Um, I actually went down to get a pair of headphones to put on the computer so if you're bringing your kids with you, they can watch cartoons mm -hmm. while we talk. Well, it's know? important. It, it affects the whole family. It does. So it really is a good thing to have the family there. Yeah, it does. And there's such, a, there's such a wide range of programs out there that work and that can be utilized effectively to either like increase your revenue, reduce your expenses, or get more quality time with your family mm -hmm. or, or different things. And, so if you come in, if you come into the office, one of the first questions are going to be, are your essentials met? Do you have shelter? Do you have a place to live? Um, do you own a rent? Uh, do you have transportation? Transportation is such a critical need in, in central Massachusetts. Uh, do you have these things? And then, you know, what are, you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for advice? Are you looking to go back to school? Do you just want to know how things work generally? And then we'll start the conversation. And okay. I'll, I'll get to learn a little bit more. And based on those answers, um, we'll be able to provide you a pretty good plan um, of where to go within the next year or throughout the next year to get to where you're mm -hmm. looking for to meet your goals right and then uh, I know a lot of the people at least in uh, the central and the eastern part of the state that we can connect you with one-on-one -on -one. we can actually talk right on the phone usually in the office I can call them up and and we can start that conversation and set appointments and make schedules and things so uh, if you come in if that's what you want uh, we can make a pretty good plan for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, That's and, wonderful. Yeah, and I'll give you I'll give you um, an example of one of the last uh, folks that came in just came in and said, "Hey, I'm not really sure what to what to do, right?" Mm -hmm. And just uh, I just got home two weeks ago. Um, I'm back at home with the family. I need to get some income coming in. I need a job. I don't have a job. I said, "Well, do you have saving for you prepared for this transition home?" I said, not really right mm -hmm. and, I, and I get that I understand right yeah. so um, so one of the things is go down every town and city has a local veteran services officer right and they administer a benefit called chapter 115 it's a, a means tested uh, low income program right but that can help square you away with a uh, past due rent um, give you a, a stipend out you know every month to go in your pocket if you pass due utilities I can help you out with that and then you have the welcome home bonus uh, that you apply through through the um, through the state, and that depending on the time, might get fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, and that usually processes relatively quick. Um, unemployment benefits you can go there, and then start applying for VA benefits, uh, VA disability, uh, VA health care, and then those all lead to other benefits that you can mm -hmm. do. And if you know how it works and how to combine these. It's not a very difficult process. It does take a few days of effort, mm -hmm. um, but getting through that uh, is, isn't too bad, but it's much easier if you have somebody to say, hey, this is your step-by-step. -step. This yeah, is how to get absolutely. through it and where to go. And uh, so what that's really done for us is in a short period of time, we've had uh, so many veterans come in, but it's been like other it's been unlike on other veterans organizations that I've worked with and mm -hmm. for, you know, in the past. Um, in this case, almost everybody is post 9-11, right? So they're all, you know, in their 30s or younger, you know, mostly, uh, not, not all, but mostly in the 30s or younger. Uh, more than half are female, which is which mm -hmm. is new for an wow. organization. I've never been in an organization that, that's had that. Um, so it's great. So we're exploring all these new, all these new areas. So information referrals come in and we get to compile data showing what the largest needs are in that community you know so um, knowing what's needed in Worcester is much different than what might be needed in the state which is much different than might be needed in the country right mm -hmm. so you know Worcester's unemployment rate is four percent but if you go to Yuma Arizona you're talking 15 percent unemployment rate so we want to make sure that we're concentrating on what's big in Worcester and not necessarily what's big in the rest of the country. Not, not Worcester, but Worcester County, the Worcester area. And right. what's your geographic area that you service? Uh, is it all of Massachusetts or is... Well, it would depend what it is, right? So mm -hmm. most of our donors are right now are from Worcester County. So our financial assistance is limited to residents of Worcester County, right? So our financial assistance is to meet needs that can't be met through other organizations. Uh, 
but information referrals, uh, you know, we can do that remotely, we can do that over the phone, we can do that via email, there's so many different ways that we can do that. That's open to anybody in Massachusetts. Right? Now, if you live in another state, I'm not familiar with the local program, so okay. uh, I'm not gonna be much help there. Yeah, right? but, but anyone in Massachusetts, veteran, can call you, mm -hmm. get all the information, meet with you, devise a plan, and then for financial assistance in terms of housing and all of those things you can help in the Worcester in the Worcester County, County. Right? so financial assistance is very limited you know we're small because that comes from that's not coming from government government grants right that's coming from individual donors throughout the city that say hey we want to we believe in what you're doing and we want to help out right so I'll give you an example of how financial assistance is used if you are qualified for uh, needs-based public assistance you need to go to that program you need to be using that program right so those programs are designed uh, for you so you need to get out of that program first what this is more the financial assistance is more intended to do is prevent somebody from spiraling into that need so uh, great example uh, as somebody working working two jobs ball tires in the car, picking the kids up from school, mm -hmm. right? Just can't afford to get those tires because uh, if you bought the tires, you couldn't pay the rent. And yeah. so something should come up, some opportunity, and this is the way of thinking. Something's going to happen. I know it within the next couple of months is going to let me buy the tires. Mm -hmm. You know, in the meantime, hope they hold out. Yeah, you know, right. um, so you guys supplied that financial. So we came in, we just stepped in and said, okay, you know, we'll get you the tires because we want you to be safe. We want mm -hmm. the kids to be safe. So how do you find out about those needs? Do they actually apply for that financial assistant when the need arises? Say you need new tires. Do you call up and say, hey, Adam, I had a problem with my car. I'm, I, I'm thinking sometimes they're probably too proud to do that. Yeah. So, so how do they actually get the need met if that yeah, situation arises. A lot of time it will be it will be word of mouth. In some cases I'll just find because I'm always out there. I'm, 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 I try to be everywhere all at the same time, right? So um, I'll find that situation. In the tires case, that's somebody who I just saw. You know, so, oh, what's going on with your tires, dude? You know? Uh, and, uh, okay. And then that led into a conversation. I talked about what I did, and I said, oh, oh. You know, I said, oh, I'm engaged ties. Not a big deal. You know, not a big deal. Come in, let's talk about some things and talk about your budget and things. And, and it's not you know, a loan. They, you actually just pay for their tires, right, which right. is nice. And so loans are something that we're, overall, uh, at Easter Sales is something that we're looking at and that we're introducing this year is a uh, small, very, very low to no interest loans mm -hmm. um, for the disabled population to get some assistive technology and stuff. Yeah. But for, uh, for our program, the, the donor funds, is to really meet those acute one-time expenses that have, mm -hmm. a, have the potential to spiral a family into a very difficult situation that's going to be very hard to get out of. Mm -hmm. right? So if you have to choose between paying your insurance deductible because of an accident or your rent or your utilities, you know, that's a tough choice to make. Uh, so we can step in. Uh, and, and help out a little bit. We're talking very modest amounts, you know, so a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars. You know, this isn't a, um, not a few thousand dollars, mm -hmm. you know, to, to pay three months of past due rent. You know, we should have started working on that before. But let's line you up with some programs and then maybe we can get those pieces knocked down and make that expense more affordable, mm -hmm. right? So Does the government help out with programs for financial needs for vets, um, veterans? It does. It does, right? So, because you're a nonprofit, so you rely on um, financial donors to um, help you with these. But the government must have something that can can help them. Can they, if they do, can they use both? Yeah, and that's yeah, you can, and that's that's where you, things start getting a little more complex, right? So, um, on the local side, right, you have you have the Chapter 115 benefit I talked a little bit about. Yeah. Right? So that's a, that's a low-income benefit that can help uh, provide monthly stipend and you can almost look at that as a, as a cost-of-living stipend. Okay. Um, now, if you are 65 or older or significantly disabled and you can't work, that's a really good program and that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
if you've recently lost a job and you're short-term unemployed and you're looking for another job, that program makes a lot of sense. But what can happen with a program like that is when you earn income, that income gets deducted from your benefit. Okay, right. So if you start falling into the trap, which is why I really want to keep people away from the trap. I can, I can tell a little story behind this, but um, what happens is you start getting the public assistance benefit and then you move into the affordable subsidized housing where it's 30% of that public assistance benefit is taken for your rent and then the rest is put into your pocket and you use that to sustain yourself. And then you'll get uh, the other benefits that go on top of that. Now, if you're not, if you're comfortable with that quality of life, that can be a, a place that you want to stay, right? And so having that long-term uh, dependence is something that five years from now you're going to be in that same situation. So what do you want to do? So that can be that can be a trap that's very scary to get out of, mm -hmm. right? So if you go back to work, uh, everything is going to become much more expensive for you. Now you're going to be paying full price utilities. Now you're going to be paying full price rent. So how do you move from public assistance if you're on there for a long time and capable, right? How do you move from that um, back to independence, you know, if you're right. afraid to make that jump, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that requires a lot of discussion, right? Uh, it seems like a very complex issue. It is. With a lot of moving parts. It is, you know. And your program, from what I'm understanding, is really a starting point. Yes. And a great informational um, a opportunity for them to learn, start, here's A, B, C, D, and then referring them to different uh, organizations that you've seen that work. Yeah, so we have we have that as the primary source, and then on top of that we have our budgeting class that we're introducing in March. Okay. That will be, you know, this is how you create a budget, this is how you create a long-term plan, and this is how you move from where you are to whatever goal you have. So, so that's going to be a really fun one. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to really enjoy that. Uh, we have a female veterans peer group, which is which is uh, something new for the area. That's that's getting a lot of attention, and um, it's just it's just a fun group, a fun group of people. Um, and uh, and other things are coming down coming down the track. And this is all because of our what we're finding in the local community. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're we're having a good time. We're we're getting some really good things done. And, and you're helping so many people. We are. Which is, um, which is wonderful because yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. They the, served yeah. our country. They deserve to come back and have all of these things available to help them. Yeah. And the demand is much higher than we anticipated for very little outreach. Very little outreach. And, um, yeah, we've doubled uh, the expectation already. So. Well, good for so, you. Congratulations. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing amazing work and there's so many other wonderful things that you're going to be doing. So when you start um, these new programs, you'll definitely have to come back and tell us more about them. Because, oh, absolutely. Because, yeah. um, you know, we want to make sure that our veterans are taken care of. My husband is a veteran. My dad mm -hmm. was a veteran. So, and I know that um, my husband has gone through that veteran's manual <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard. He has to learn a lot on his own. You so really do. this is really a great service um, for the veterans. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. And what you're doing is awesome work. Thanks. So thank you so much. I know we only have a half an hour and the time has gone by already. And right? it seems like we have so much more to talk about. So mm -hmm. I definitely want to give the viewers, um, at least they have a little bit more knowledge about the program and give them a way to contact you, um, any website that they can find out more information that we couldn't, um, we didn't have time to share today. So can you share that with the viewers? Yeah. So... So probably the easiest thing to do is if you have a Facebook account, is just go on to Facebook, look for Veterans Count Massachusetts or at uh, Vets Count MA, and what you'll see is a little star that says Massachusetts on it, and that's the profile picture. Click okay. on that. You can kind of see what we're doing and keep updated. Um, or you can go to www.eastersales.com slash MA, and you can see all the programs and services that we offer there. You can call me directly. Um, at 508-751-6312. Or send me an email at acostello at eastersalesma.org. Um, 
Yeah, I think and we're going to put all of those on the show so that people don't have to memorize them. So they're all going to be on the show. So make sure you check out the show and write it all down and make, you know, use these services because it sounds like you're making a huge impact and you've just started. And we've just started. That's right. awesome. Right. So, so the veterans are really enjoying the program. They're, they're Wonderful. liking the program and they're getting value from it. So that's, that makes me happy. And that makes them happy and their families. Yes. So wonderful. Well, thank you so much. You. I'm sorry we didn't have more time, but I really appreciate you taking the time to come out of your busy schedule and keep doing the good work that you're doing. You know, next time let's do a movie. There you we know? go. Next time we're going to do a movie. That sounds awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll have the show. We'll have all your contact information and people can contact you because it sounds like there's a lot more that you can share with them about all the good things that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody has anything specific that they'd like covered, love to hear what that is and then we'll make sure to do that. Perfect. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank and thank you viewers for tuning in again. Um, our next show next month, we are going to be having John O'Neill, who's chef for seniors, and he'll be doing a little cooking, and we'll be educating you on some healthy eating tips and cooking. So please tune back in. But until then, remember to live your best life every day starting today. This is Sherry Keating. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a great day.